This is the seventh grade lesson for the 23rd of January, 2017. You have your fourth caught you today starting. So that was the bell work. I don't have the corrections for that one up, so you will need to do that one on your own. Just look up the definition online, okay? Some reminders. Some of you have the Shakespeare sonnet, which was homework over the weekend. That is due today, okay? Your poetry discussion is also due today. It's due tonight at midnight. You have a fire discussion that starts today, okay? And that one is due on Monday of next week. You also have a vocabulary assignment due Monday. And your monthly reading assignment is due next Tuesday. Okay, so you've got a few a few different things coming up. Okay? Now, for your fire discussion, read the directions carefully because it says you will need to use the vocabulary words. I have included those words on the slideshow for you. There actually is a printout of them, and if you were missed class, just come see me and I will grab those for you. Okay? But here are the different words. There are 15 of them. Now, if you look, you'll see the word, the actual word, in bold. Underneath it, you'll see a really funny spelling with apostrophes and everything else. That's called the phonetic spelling, and that basically allows you to see exactly how the word is supposed to be pronounced. Once you recognize the symbols, you can pretty much pronounce anything. The apostrophe lets you know what emphasis is supposed to go on what syllable. Okay. Next to it, you have the part of speech that it's going to be, you have the definition, and you also have the actual word used in a sentence. So the words here are acrid, casualty, congested or congestion, cope, headlong, hurdle, impede, inevitable. Um, feel free to pause these as long as you need to get the definitions down. Initiate or initiation, irate, lax, negligent or negligence, smolder, stringent, and throng. So those are the 15 words you're going to need to use. I can tell you right now, your first discussion that starts this week, the fire discussion, you'll need to use five of those words in your actual response. Okay? All right, so today... We finished up work on Wandering Angus and Sonnet 43. We discussed both poems with the shoulder partners. We wrote brief summaries of each poem. It doesn't have to be two or three sentences. It can be longer. But if you were absent, you need to make sure you're getting that done. Make sure you include as much as you remember of the meaning behind each poem. Okay? We discussed with shoulder partners the themes of each poem, how they are similar, how they are different. And then you wrote those down in a brief response as well. Include the poem title for each one, just so that way I know what you're talking about. Okay? And the last thing we did was answer the following prompt with shoulder partners, and we wrote them down. All right? So both Shakespeare and Yeats were famous for the many ways they could express emotion in their work. Looking at their diction, which is their word choice, and uses of figurative language, how does each author express the emotion of the poem? Provide four examples of textual evidence to back up your claim, use two from each poem. So basically what that means is find an example of figurative language from each poem and an example of word choice. Okay? I will give you some examples of word choice, but you cannot use these ones. All right? So let's take the expression glittering girl. Unique way of describing someone. He doesn't say beautiful. He doesn't say gorgeous. He says glimmering. Why use glimmering? That's diction. That's his word choice. Why did he use that? Okay. Well, he used that to kind of draw attention to it. He used alliteration. And if you think about it, it's that double G, that g, -g. It almost sounds like you're stuttering almost, which means she's so beautiful that the author is speechless, or a um, Angus is speechless. Okay? Another thing that we discussed a lot in class with Shakespeare is his oxymorons, or two words next to each other that mean the exact opposite. So he says bright, you know, darkly bright, or bright and dark. He says shadows, shadows, and shadows form, form happy show. Excuse me. There's quite a few different things that he does there, okay? You can use one of those examples if you would like, but that's again diction. He made a conscious choice to repeat certain words, or to have certain words be opposites. He, the whole poem uses opposites. 
why would he do that? Okay? So that's what I'm looking for. All right? As long as you can get that finished and turned into me, then you are good to go. All right? So basically, when they were finished, put your name on the sheet of paper, and they were done. And that concludes the lesson of the day.